And now onto our dinosaur of the day, Thecodontosaurus, which was a request from Casper ZT2 and Dinosaur4602. So thanks. It was a sauropodomorph that lived in the Triassic in what is now England, and it was small and bipedal. It was about 3.9 feet or 1.2 meters long and weighed about 24 pounds or 11 kilograms. The largest Thecodontosaurus was estimated to be 8.2 feet or 2.5 meters long and had a short neck and a large skull with large eyes, and the front limbs were shorter than the hind limbs. The hands were long and narrow, and it had a large claw on each, and there were five digits on the hands and the feet. The tail was also longer than the rest of the body, and it had powerful back legs so it could reach low-hanging tree branches. It's also possible that Thecodontosaurus could have swum? Swam? (laughs) Could have done either, depending on which is grammatically correct. (laughs) Yes. It used its tail as a rudder and had had strong limbs for swimming, potentially. Thecodontosaurus lived on a tropical island, and it was herbivorous. It had serrated leaf-shaped teeth, and these sharp teeth could tear up leaves. It was originally thought to be carnivorous. The name Thecodontosaurus means socket tooth lizard. It was found in 1834 at the Durdham Down Quarry, and it was originally described and named in 1836. So it's one of the first dinosaurs discovered. It's the fourth or fifth named dinosaur, though dinosauria as a concept didn't exist until 1842. Thecodontosaurus was at first thought to be this weird reptile that was similar to both lizards and crocodiles. The quarry workers found quote-unquote saurian animal remains in Bristol's limestone quarries, and they took some bones to the Bristol Institution for the Advancement of Science, Literature, and Arts so that Samuel Stutchbury could see them. He wasn't there at the time, so his colleague Henry Riley took a look, and then when Stutchbury came back, he asked for more specimens. David Williams, who was a country parson and geologist, was also excited about these, so there was a race between Williams and Stutchbury and Riley to describe the bones. Stutchbury and Williams didn't trust each other. Seems to be a theme back then. (laughs) Williams thought that Stutchbury was selfish in trying to get all the fossils to the Bristol Institution, and Stutchbury thought that Williams was trying to poach fossils. They both worked on descriptions of the dinosaur, but Williams didn't have as much fossil material as Riley and Stutchbury, so he didn't try to turn his report back in 1835 into a legitimate description of the animal. And Riley and Stutchbury named Thecodontosaurus and gave a short description in a talk in 1836 and then finished their paper in 1838 and published in 1840. That was a while before the Bone Wars. They're like the original Bone Wars. <laughs> yeah. The name Thecodontosaurus refers to the roots of the teeth not being fused with the jawbone but instead in separate tooth sockets, like modern lizards. Originally, Riley and Stutchbury thought that it was a member of Squamata, which includes lizards and snakes. Owen, Richard Owen, did not consider it to be a dinosaur. He assigned it to Thecodontia in 1865. Then in 1870, Thomas Huxley found that it was a dinosaur, though he thought it was a Scolidosauridae. Modern analysis is still not conclusive. Sometimes it's seen as a basal sauropodomorph or may have come before the prosauropod sauropod split. There's only one valid species, the type species, Thecodontosaurus antiquus, though many other species have been named, as you can imagine, from the 1840s, well, and later. The species was named in 1843 by John Morris in his catalog of British fossils, and the species name antiquus means ancient in Latin. The holotype consists of a lower jaw, and it was actually destroyed in World War II in November 1940 during the Bristol Blitz. Some bones survived. 184 are now part of the Bristol City Museum and Art Gallery, and more fossils were later found near Bristol at Tytherington. There's about 245 fragmentary specimens currently known, and Peter Dalton assigned another lower jaw as the neotype back in 1985. There have been a lot of misassigned species, some that are now considered to be other genera and some that are now considered to be dubious. Riley and Stutchbury also found some carnivore teeth that they named Paleosaurus Cylindridon and Paleosaurus platydon. In the late 1800s, there was a theory that they were from carnivorous prosauropods with similar bodies to Thecodontosaurus but with teeth that could slice. Arthur Smith Woodward named Thecodontosaurus platydon in 1890 based on this, and Frederick von Huhn named Thecodontosaurus cylindridon in 1908, but now they're both not considered to be valid. Once Thecodontosaurus fossils were mistakenly described as a different genus, in 1891, Harry Govier Seeley named Argosaurus mcgillivrayi, and he f- thought that those fossils were found in 1844 and that they came from the northeast coast of Australia. But in 1999, it was found that Riley and Stutchbury probably sent those bones to the British Museum of Natural History and were mislabeled. 
In 1906, Frederick von Huhn said that they were similar to Thecodontosaurus and named the species Thecodontosaurus macgillivrayi, but now it's considered to be a junior synonym of Thecodontosaurus antiquus. That's good. That one's easier to say. Yes. <laughs> it's quite a mouthful. So Thecodontosaurus was part of the Bristol Dinosaur Project, which for about four years, thousands of volunteers helped gather and preserve its fossils. So there was a lot of lab research and outreach work, which might explain why there's so many bones. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash I know dino or click the link on the left. <laughs> 